Hello folks, I'm Raida Boost and in this brief video I introduce a construction material library that I have made for Auditor's Credit. And this material library enables to include some of the physical and thermal parameters to your components or let's simply say additional information that can be reused through annotation or maybe sending information to analysis packages. This construction material library is based on information that is openly available through the manufacturer websites. So please be careful as material names and parameters always change and therefore you have to ensure that if you use some material then you recheck that this is still available and you can do that by using web link that is added with each material. About installation, you can find more information about this from the following website and after installation you can then fire up your Autodesk credit and link this library to your Autodesk credit. You have to do it only once, meaning that library as such is not project dependent. You attach and then you basically forget. Or let's simply say you can search of course from this library from project to project. In this current video I use a really simple example. It's an empty project file so that I can more easily show what is the value of this library. And let's open a sample Revit project. As I said, in my case it's an empty project, but of course you can use this material library for any project. But first you need to link this material library and you do that using Manage tab then materials, you see material browser and by default you should see some materials already present in your project because even default Revit templates do have some materials included but I have cleaned it up so that it can be seen more easily how you can search from the current material library. By default you should also see Autodesk default material library and to include a new one you simply need to click on this small icon and then open existing library. You then need to go to installation folder to where you installed it and by default it is installed to the following location. In my case I installed post libraries. This library is available in Estonian and in English. So we talk about in English version right now but basically those libraries are the same in terms of content or material availability, simply descriptions are in English or in Estonian. So even if you installed both of those, please it is not recommended to link both files at the same time, because if you do a search then you get double information. So I copy this path or location, it's easier for me to link this library and I select English version. From this same location you can also find PIX folder because some materials do use textures and those textures are needed as well. But most of the materials are color based information. And of course you can see also from this location license information but this is also shown during installation. You just need to keep in mind that this library is offered as is meaning that because it is based on openly available information or data, this data can change and you need to ensure that this is still correct before you deliver the project. So let's load this library, I hit open and I can see a new row in this location. All materials are divided into several subclasses based on its name. So you can do a manual search which materials are included. Please also note that those materials are according to the Nordics from the European Union. It simply means that not all materials are available in each and every country or some materials are with different name. Therefore you may need to change a bit this library, update it as needed. Is it the change of a name or is it the change of a material property? By doing manual search you can click on material and then you can see that material information is divided into several tabs. This is a common way how material browser is built up. So you have identity tab, you can see a material name, I use comments field as a fire assistance class, then keywords, you can search through those keywords, it's easier. And you can also see a link to the website 
as I said, not all materials are not available in each region. So if there are no English version, then uh, you can see a Estonian version. But based on this information, you may quickly change this information and perhaps it's easier to use later. So graphics tab. From here you can find a color, which is a common way to represent the material. This is a simple screen grab, meaning that this color information is not 100% true, but still it is based on manufacturer information. Appearance, the same color information as it is at graphics tab, but sometimes this color may include also texture. And in this case, this texture is grabbed from PIX folder. Then physical, again, material name and different properties like mechanical, intensity, and in some cases with different types of blocks, you can also find some concrete information. If I go to thermal tab, then from here, thermal conductivity. Based on this information, you can automatically calculate your U value to your wall. Also the same intensity as it is in physical. And keywords include now default thickness values of such material. Of course, different materials can be used as a combination of different thicknesses, but those are thickness values that are produced by manufacturer. So it helps to search some material with some specific thickness and makes it easier to pick some certain material. So this is an overview of how materials are divided and how they are defined and from where you can find more information. For example, this is English link about this specific material. But let's now take a look how you can use this material library and what are some of the benefits. I hit OK to exit from this dialog. So let's take a quick look how you can use those materials and what are the benefits. So I go to architecture tab, I use wall two and I draw a simple wall. I may be tied up with level two, but this is not so important in current case. And I draw a simple wall that is maybe five meters long. So my units are in millimeters. I use a default wall style and because my project template or project itself is quite empty, I don't have many to choose from. But that is something that I try to show as well, that based on those predefined materials, you can build your library as well. So I select my wall and now I go to edit its type. I can see that currently I don't have any U or R value. Default materials don't always have such information included. So I go to structure and hit edit. And in here I can see that my current wall style has one core component and then exterior side two components and interior side one component. I keep it simple and uh, in my case I just uh, don't try to make a real wall style but just to show how it works. So for example structure. To include a material from my material library I hit those three dots and then I can do a search from material library. So for example, I search lightweight, meaning that lightweight block, and then I select some block material. If I select one of those, I can see those default thickness values, and maybe I select a classic version, and I can see that 200 millimeters is also available. So I just do a double click to include it into my project library, or I select this small arrow. Now this is selected, I hit OK and material is assigned. So maybe from the interior side, I include some gypsum board. So I do a click on those three dots again, and then perhaps I search gypsum and perhaps I select uh, one of those. I hit on this small arrow, I can again see which thicknesses are available, 12.5 millimeters. I do OK and this is already correct. Please just keep in mind that those values are not automatically coming over because I have used this wall beforehand. Those are kind of ready-made already. But you can change, of course, and uh, let's do that a bit later. So thermal layer in here, I search maybe EPS and then I scroll through those materials. So maybe I select this one, I include it into my project, then I can 
check again which thickness values are available. Not all manufacturers are showing all possible values. Instead, they show minimum and maximum. So you don't know what are the standard sizes. But let's assume that 150 is a kind of standard. So I can use that. And also keep in mind that um, even if you see available thickness values, the true thickness may come up from a combination of those. Those are just indicating some standard thicknesses so that it is easier to build your wall up. My material is selected, I hit OK. And now final selection from the exterior side, I maybe pick up some stone based board. Please also keep in mind that in terms of final layer, there are not so materials available. So this library is more or less concentrated onto the base of um, construction materials. So you don't find some specific materials that you usually use to polish your wall as such. So I search material. So I maybe just include some cement bonded particle board. I select it to my project and assign to it. Once I have all materials assigned, I can hit OK. And as you see, now I can check my U and R values. And those are coming visible because material library has real information included. So thermal conductivity information is included. And if we add or change our component thickness, then it will be recalculated. So let's do a quick example, a quick change. I hit edit again, and maybe I change the type of thermal layer and I'm selecting maybe some PR board, but maybe I go for this. So I add it to my project, I hit OK, and because this material now has a much better thermal conductivity, once I hit OK, and once I hit OK also in here, then my U value is getting a lot better. And of course, it will change when I do a change in here, changing the thickness. So 100, I hit OK, and I can see 0.15. So this is how it works. Because some physical and thermal information is included in this library, it helps to create your wall style a bit quicker. And once you have created it, you can then save it to your template project. I hit OK. So let's go to 3D view. I select my wall and I divide it into parts. And then I select visual style and shade it. As you see now, material color information is available. Maybe I do a quick change again. I use show original. I select my wall, edit type, edit again, and thermal layer, three tots. And maybe I search some glass wall. So once again, those materials may not be named exactly the same in your country. So you may need to change its name and maybe also its parameters to update this library. Therefore, it's a kind of um, template for changes. I select this material, I hit OK, so I changed my thermal layer and I'm going back to 150 millimeters. OK, OK also in here. And then I select again, show parts. Now I can select my layers and maybe do a quick annotation view. So I just simply realign those material layers like so. So my light white plop element, isolation or thermal layer, and then exterior fine layer. I will lock my 3D view, otherwise I can't annotate it. So save orientation and lock view, maybe materials as a name, okay. And then I go to annotate tab, material tag, and then I can simply quickly drag away those material names, maybe also in here. I don't spend too much time to correct alignment, just a quick demo. And by default, this material tag is getting information from material name. But of course, you can change and you can create different family types for your annotation. I first change my scaling, maybe 150, and then I can select perhaps different material tags that I prepared earlier. And this shows reaction to fire. So depending on tag type, you can grab different information from this material. Maybe I just delete it. And of course, it updates itself, meaning that if I do a change in terms of wall component, also the name will change. 
I can also build some template schedule. I have done one, quite simple, top a click and it will show material name about this wall, material manufacturer, also common area, reaction to fire and material URL. And this URL can be reused to get more information about this material. So if I open up my browser and copy this link, I can see English version about this product. Once again, not all products in this catalog don't have English information, so you may need to update it. And also not all manufacturer web pages don't always share information in different languages. Those products that are commonly available in different regions or in different countries, usually they do have also information in English. I close this schedule and let's finally concentrate also some advanced search capabilities that you can do through this material library. As I said before, I have included different keywords like material standard thickness values, so it's possible to search also based on those values. But those additional search capabilities are available only then if those materials are included into your template or into your project. So I have opened up one of my project that is basically a template that includes all materials from this library. Please keep in mind that it is not always recommended to do it in such a way because uh, this library is quite huge and you quite possibly don't need all of those material definitions but you can pick some of those and build your own template based on that. And it is not recommended to add all of those materials mainly because it will make your files larger. But from another point of view, if you have material definitions in your project, you can carry out additional search based on different parameters, keywords. So if I go to manage tab and I open up materials, you can actually see that in my case, I have included all materials into this project or project template. And it simply means that instead of searching EPS, I can search EPS that is available in 50 mil thickness values. So this list will be filtered accordingly. If I include maybe 20 mil, you can see the list is different. If I include maybe 100 mil, again, this list updates. In this English version, I don't have many keywords included, but it can be again updated. For example, you can specify or add information about this specific material, for example, which is its use or in which construction elements it can be used. Is it a wall, floor, roof, as such? And then it is easier to find also some specific material for that particular component. Sadly, it's not possible to search based on density values or thermal conductivity. But again, it can be included as a keyword if you will. So this is a main difference in terms of search capability. If you have those material definitions inside your project, you can do some additional search, maybe it takes a bit less time to find the correct material. And if you have your materials in your library, then you can do more or less some basic search. I close this dialog. By that, I will end this video. Happy testing and please do subscribe to get notifications about my new videos. Bye bye.